So I'll make a commitment. If I put you to sleep, I'll wake you up. <laughs> so we're here today to talk after, I, I follow Frank, and that, that was a great presentation by Frank. I learned a lot. And while I'm sitting in the audience, I downloaded his book from Amazon. But what, one of the key things that we recognize that he's saying is so true. It doesn't matter both sides, whether it's Democrat or Republican, both sides trample on the Constitution continuously. Right? They just, what is this thing called the Constitution? And Article 1, Section 8, we've got strict limits on what the federal government was given authority to do, and about 90% of what they now do is outside of the, the borders of the Constitution. So you might ask the question, like someone just did, well, what should we do? And I'll give you a quick little story. So in uh, 08, the election of 08 happened, and uh, I turned to my wife and I said, you know, this is not gonna turn out well. We're gonna have to get involved. Up until then, I voted, but I didn't participate really. I did some research, found an organization up in D.C. called Freedom Works, got on a plane, went up there, interviewed the team, said, yeah, okay. So my wife and I started supporting Freedom Works. And then I said, I've got to understand the system locally, so I joined Tea Party Manatee. And uh, we did uh, made some decent progress in 2010 election. We got the House back. And then in 2012 election, we really didn't get good results. By this time, Tea Party Manatee asked me to be on the board of directors and be in charge of research. So the first question after the 2012 results was, what is the game we're in? What, what is really going on here? And we defined the game we're in as progressives from both sides of the aisle are launching a continuous stream of unconstitutional initiatives, and it's a divide and conquer strategy against us. So, here we are. How many people think uh, Agenda 21 is a big deal, big problem? How many people think uh, Common Core is a big deal, big problem? Uh, how many people think uh, taking the guns away and restricting guns, big deal, big problem, right? <laughs> Notice what's going on. So when they launch these initiatives, it divides us, right? Now what if I got up today and told you that there is a solution? that if we all stood up and worked towards, we could solve all of those problems with one solution. And that's what our research showed at Tea Party Manatee. The question was, is there one goal that if we all got in the boat and rowed together, even if it took us two to three, five years, could we solve the problems? And the answer was yes, restore our Constitution. That was it. That's the answer. So then the question becomes, how do we go about restoring our Constitution? And yours truly did research across the U.S. looking at every patriotic and liberty organization. What are they doing? And do they have any program and probability of success to, to restore our Constitution? I found a small group of folks up in New York State. And they had been in and out of court for five or six years. And they discovered, are there any lawyers in the audience? Any lawyers? Okay. They discovered that the lawyers and the judges have hijacked our legal system. We're founded as a common law country, and Florida, if you read the Constitution of Florida, we're founded as a common law state. Okay? But what happens is they take what's called statutes. Now, statutes were invented for the legislature to tell the government workers how to do their job. They don't apply to you and me as we the people unless we voluntarily accept them to apply to us. But they've got some very tricky ways that they get us to volunteer. As an example, you ever sign an application for a license to drive? You ever sign a bank deposit card? You ever sign a birth certificate? Those are all contracts. You're getting contracted into a corporate environment. So at any rate, what these folks had figured out is that if they used the right words and they went into the court, they could stay in the common law jurisdiction. So in essence, all of our founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, they're all common law documents. and We're, we're fundamentally a common law country, but it's been hijacked and it's been turned into a large corporation, big revenues, just divorce court. We have a no-fault divorce 
system in most states in the union, it's a $50 billion high margin revenue stream. We've even found the fines coming from the court system itself going into, 20% of them going into the judge's retirement accounts. It's a mess. It's completely messed up. So what these folks did in New York was start a little organization called NationalLibertyAlliance.org. And hopefully you got a little brochure that was handed out when you came in. And uh, the website is there. But let me give you a little history real quick because I know we don't have much time. The history is all the way back to 1215 A.D. Who can tell me what happened in 1215 A.D.? Magna Carta. Anybody ever read Article 61? Magna Carta. Okay. Yep. So Article 61 says... And the, and, the, and the king signed this thing, but it says basically that if the king did something to hurt the people, there would be four investigator administrators. And they would investigate the complaint and go to the king and say, look, there's a defect here. You have 40 days to fix this defect. Then if they did not get the problem fixed, and the, way, the definition of the problem fixed is the victim restored. That's key to common law. The victim has to be restored. If they didn't, then these four administrators would take the evidence to the 25. Now, who, back then, in, it says 25 barons. Today, that's 25 of we the people. And when they bring that evidence, then if that 25 group of 25 people vote that this is an indictment, then the people can do whatever they need to do to restore those people. They can take the king's lands, can take the king's fortune, just cannot take the king and his family. That's all. Cannot kidnap anybody. So now, this is called the common law grand jury. It was set up, these, this group of 25 people. But back up one more. I've got one question for you. Who can tell me what's the definition of American exceptionalism? What is the definition of American exceptionalism? What's that? Individuality? Well, that's a symptom of it. We the people have the power. Now, what does that mean? So, all human organizations known to man are of one design, a pyramid, with the rulers at the top and we the people at the bottom. The rulers are dictators, kings, lords, whatever it is, and we're at the bottom. Our founders said, no, 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 we've seen too much tyranny. We're going to flip that pyramid up. We the people are the highest ranking sovereign in our system. Right below we the people are the states, which the people created. And right below the states is the general government or the federal government. We call it the federal government today. So notice the hierarchy. And in any system, it is the highest ranking sovereign who gets to say what is law and what isn't law. So remember, we're back in 1215 AD. Now you roll the camera forward to one minute before 1776 where we signed the declaration. The highest ranking sovereign in the system is the King of England. And in fact, a lot of people were getting frustrated because he would make law one day and the next day he'd change his mind and new law. Now we snip the cord to the King of England. Now the 13 colonies become instantaneously 13 independent sovereign nations. But within the law system, who is the highest ranking sovereign? Who? 25 people. When we get together as 25, so we're all kings of our domain, but we have no subjects. We're kings with no subjects. And as long as my domain doesn't interfere with Jason's domain or doesn't interfere with Mike's domain, we're good to go. But if our domains interfere, then we've got we to gotta resolve the problem. So when 25 of we the people get together as an investigatory body to evaluate the evidence to see if someone needs to stand trial, when this happens, not even the U.S. Supreme Court can review the decisions of that group of 25. Okay? That's power. Now, let me give you a simple example of how that power could be used. Across Florida today, we have 67 counties. We've reconstituted the common law grand jury in every county. 
We're going to hold four regional meetings. We need everybody in all the Tea Parties, 9-12 groups, the veterans, everybody to show up. Out of the people who show up in each one of these meetings, we're going to elect the 25. They become part of the statewide unified grand jury of Florida. And then we can start really tackling our problems. So, for example, the very first problem we've decided is most important to tackle is called jury, null, uh, not jury nullification, jury tampering and obstruction of justice. Why? Because as we've tried to stand up our county-based grand juries, our board of county commissioners are blocking the access to the grand jury room in the judicial center. So instead, we're going to stand up the, the statewide grand jury. But the second most important priority, as far as we can evaluate it today, is we must stop Common Core now. We must stop it dead in its tracks. Why should we stop it now? Well, because the more it goes forward, the more the kids' brains are getting programmed, and we're dead. We've got to stop it. So one of the things that triggered our research was the State Department of Education held a meeting in Orlando, getting feedback. Lots of people went. I didn't go, but I was told about 80 people went. 77 said, don't do this. Three said, oh, that's pretty good. So there's the will of the people, right? 77 to 30. So what did the State Department of Education do? Screw you. We're doing it, right? So what did that do? That caused us to do a little research. Where does the governor and the State Department of Education get the authority to tell us what the curriculum is going to be and what the testing standards are going to be. Where does that authority come from? Who can tell us? Guess what? They don't have the authority. We read every word in the Florida Constitution having anything to do with education. No authority was ever granted to any government official. Even the local school boards do not have that authority. Who has the authority under common law? The parents of the kids. Only the parents of the kids. No one can dictate it. Only the parents of the kids, because until the kid is age of majority, they're the responsibility of the parents under common law. And no one can touch that decision. So what do we have? We've got a governor, we've got a department, state department of education, and we've got 67 county boards, school boards who are driving a hoax and we know because in Manatee County, Tea Party Many went to the school board and said, no, 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 stop this. And they said, no, we can't. It's the state. We went to the state and they said, no, 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 it's the local guys. And they just kept doing this. So it turns out that they don't have the authority. But worse than that, there's a list of about 12 serious, and I'm talking serious, crimes they committed to push it forward including, top on the list is uh, usurpation, that means taking the power away from someone that justly holds the power, treason against the U.S. Constitution, breach of oaths of office. This is very interesting. Article 6, Section 6 of the U.S. Constitution says, if you take your salary or your wages from the public treasury, you must have an oath of office to the U.S. Constitution. Oh, this is interesting. So why don't we hold these guys accountable to their oaths of office? Well, guess what? If you're an official in government and you step outside of your oath of office and you do anything against the U.S. Constitution, anything, you are acting in your private capacity. You have lost your official immunity and your assets are at risk and you are actionable. So as we stand up this statewide grand jury, we are going to be giving the grand jury the criminal evidence of what they've done with Common Core and ask the grand jury to investigate the governor, the Department of Education, and 67 school boards. And we can't stand up and say what that jury will do, but I think we've got a pretty good idea what that jury's going to do. So the grand jury was really invented with three main purposes. The first purpose protect common people from unjust charges from those in power. You ever hear of prosecutorial um, mismanagement or aggressive? A lot of people. Number two, upon evidence that is given to the grand jury from we the people, 
and evidence that it develops on its own investigation, make sure that the right people are standing trial, the right bad actors in any county, in any state. And the third and possibly the most important function of the grand jury today in today's environment, the, the common law grand jury has both the ability and the responsibility to reach into every part of elected and unelected government and root out corruption. And the definition of corruption includes anything repugnant to our Constitution. So our forefathers, our founders, gave us the number one tool to keep our government centered on our Constitution, common law grand jury. But what happened? Well, the progressives didn't like this idea because under common law, they can't tell us how to live our lives. There are two fundamental principles about common law. Principle number one, for every injury, there must be a remedy. Now, what does that say? That says our whole judicial system was designed by our founders to restore the victim. Is that what goes on today? No. But the second principle about common law, for there to be a crime, there must be a victim, and the state cannot be the victim. Think about what that means. Right? So the progressives are thinking, how are we going to hold uh, the, the people accountable to living the way we want them to live? Well, they can't do that. We're the kings. They're our servants. They're our public servants. But they figured out a way to trick us into it, and they used their statutes, which don't apply to us unless we allow them to, and then that's how they do it. So fundamentally, we can go into any part of government and here I dug out of the archives, 1901, December, Manatee County Grand Jury. So every six months, a new set of 25 people give the county a complete audit of the books and records and of the operations. And I'd like to read to you this document. It's called the Grand Jury Presentment. In Circuit Court of the Sixth Judicial Circuit of the State of Florida in and for Manatee County to the Honorable J.B. Wall, Judge Presiding. We, the Grand Jury, having completed the business of the term laid before our body, beg leave to submit this our general presentment. So these are 25 people. We've inspected the public buildings, records, and books of, of officers brought before us and beg leave to recommend as follows. Number one, that a suitable safe be purchased for the use of the county treasurer. Number two, that a more commodious arrangements be made for the safekeeping of the county records now in the custody of the clerk of the circuit's court. Number three, that the courthouse floors be painted or stained and that the building be thoroughly cleaned. Okay, now notice what's going on. These are we the people inspecting everything and deciding what needs to be fixed. And it becomes a corrective action list to the Board of County Commissioners. You guys, this is your job. Get this stuff fixed. Number four, that the county jail be inspected and overhauled in order that it be made a safe place for the keeping of county prisoners and that the sanitary conditions, which at present are very bad, may be improved. Number five, that a new safe be purchased for the use of the county judge it appearing that important records in said office have no protection from fire, present safe being entirely too small and to contain the records and files of important papers in said office. Number six, we find from, excuse me, an inspection of the books of the county officers that the same are well kept and so far as we are able to judge with but one exception, the various county officers have been faithful in the discharge of their duties. Number seven, we find that upon inspection of the books of the county tax collector that there appears to be a shortage of $9,020.26. In conclusion, we wish to thank the Honorable Court for its indulgence towards us and for the many courtesies extended. We also wish to express our thanks and the able advice of acting state attorney C.C. Whitaker and for his uniform kindness in dealing with us in the questions brought before us for our consideration. Okay? This is a record of how the system was designed by our founders to work. What the progressives want us to believe is although the, I think it's the declaration said that just governments derive their powers from the people, the governed, 
They want us to believe that the only way you can change the system is the ballot box. But it isn't. It's the common law grand jury. We can keep all political decisions centered on the Constitution. We just have to stand up and do it. What happened was in 1946, the progressives took an opportunity and wrote a little footnote in the rules of criminal procedure that they considered it obsolete. So we, we were getting back from World War II, we were busy building our careers and everything else, and we fell asleep at the world. We all fell asleep. Now we just gotta wake up and do it. So at the end of the day, we're finding already a lot of people complaining to us. When we held our organizing meeting in Manatee County, 28 people showed up, four Tea Party people. 24 people have been seriously abused by our justice system in Manatee County. And when you, uh, Mark Schmitter is here in the audience, he's done it for Orange County, right, Mark? Yeah. Here's Mark. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the back corner, Mike Bollum has done it for Sarasota County. Mike is the county coordinator for Sarasota County. Over here we have two other gentlemen, uh, Jason Hoyt and Chris uh, Hopkins are both working in their counties. So fundamentally, it's, it's happening, we're standing them up. In the next four weeks, we will have these four regional meetings. We need a lot of turnout, we need support. And one thing I'd highly recommend on that little brochure, the web address is called nationallibertyalliance.org. If you go to that site, you register, create a password, and then look at the jurist tab. There's a tremendous amount of great historical documents on the site. But look at the jurist tab, and under the jurist tab, look at jurist documents and jurist orientation. And what you're then doing is getting yourself ready so that you could act as a, as a jurist. You could be one of the 25. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, who's overseeing John Chimber. Mr. John, and you can find the names on the website. Yes. That's a very interesting question. I get that kind of question. How were those people, how are the 25 appointed? And I also get the question, uh, by whose authority? And it turns out that, again, we the people are the highest ranking sovereign. We're the kings of our own domain, no subjects. But that means no government person can put a requirement on us. We can put them on the government people, but they can't put one on us. So when we gather together, the 25 get selected by we the people, not by the government. In fact, Lysander Spooner wrote in 1854 a book called Trial by Jury. There are three key elements for an independent jury to be independent. The first element, the government cannot choose the jurors. Who chooses the jurors today? The government. Second key thing. A jury needs to be able to judge whether the law is constitutional or not and whether it applies to this case. All judges instruct jurors they cannot argue that, they cannot decide that. And the judges in the instructions say you can only decide the facts of the case. So we have three legs to the stool for an independent jury and Lysander Spooner has said throughout history if you lose any one of those legs you're headed for tyranny, it's just a matter of time, and we've lost two of them. So we must get together, stand up, and by the way, let me ask you a quick question. How many people would be okay if it was a Republican officer or a Democratic officer as long as they stayed centered on the Constitution? Right? Who would care? So this is the way to solve the whole problem. It, it you know, I'm a big fan of Fixing the voter fraud problem, that's a serious issue. But right now, we don't need to worry about it. We can tackle Agenda 21, property rights, common core, gun rights, you name it, Obamacare. It's all unconstitutional. Furthermore, we can, the first meeting we have is with the judge of the um, county. We say, judge, uh, from this day forward, we're going to hold you accountable to this little book called the U.S. Constitution. Then we have a meeting with the sheriff. Same, same discussion. Then we start working, and by the way, in, in most 
prisons and jails in, in Florida, you have about 75% of the people are in there unconstitutionally. There's no victim. No victim, right? If they smoke the weed or something, there's no victim. So at the end of the day, that's the common law system. But, but fundamentally, we, we've got to build community support for this, and then comes the big payday. Here's the big payday. We call into the grand jury room the elected officials that go to DC. Mr. Rubio, Mr. Nelson, please come in. We'd like to have a conference room with you. From this day forward, we're going to hold you accountable to the Constitution. Do you understand what this means? We'll say, no, what does that mean? Tell us. We'll say, in Article 1, Section 8, there's a limited set of enumerated powers that the founders granted the general government. If you vote for one bill whose scope is broader than those 18 enumerated powers, we will be forced to indict you. And as soon as a public officer is indicted, they get suspended from office and must stand trial. Nobody can block them. While I, work, while I walk to the first question, tell us what the Supreme Court said in 1992. Very, very important case, 1992. You can find it on the website. In a case called U.S. versus Williams, Justice Antonin Scalia, Supreme Court Justice, went out of his way to give us the history of the common law grand jury in the U.S. And he said, it is not part of the judicial system, the executive system, or the legislative system. Because Article 1 is the legislators, Article 2 is the executive branch, Article 3 is the legislative branch. It is not part of that. It's mentioned in the amendments, the Fifth Amendment and the Seventh Amendment. So Justice Scalia says it's like the fourth branch of government owned by we the people for the benefit of we the people. So it is, in, as, as recently as 1992, fully confirmed that it is not to be supervised by anybody. The judges cannot supervise it. The courts cannot supervise it. It is owned by we the people for the benefit of we the people. Amen. Yes, you were talking earlier about stat, you know, statutes that they were, they are for actually the elected officials, and we enter into them by contract, by things we uh, sign. Uh, and then you've been talking about uh, county, uh, county issues, right now. I want to know then and then you just skip to federal. Okay, you kind of skip state. So would that apply to any statutes, uh, you know, that comes out of Tallahassee, comes out of the state, that we can prove, we can say that it's unconstitutional? And how would you go about that? Great question. So what happens is the only statutes that we have to pay any attention to are those that are fully compatible with the Constitution. Okay. So as long as the Constitution is, is what we, Constitution, everybody agreed when they signed it and when the states became a state, they agreed it's the supreme law of the land. Supreme law of the land means all the judges must obey the Constitution. They're not doing it, but that's what it says. So now, on a county level, as we stand up the grand jury in the county, now we're being blocked in Manatee and Marion County and stuff, so we're going to go to the state and do that first, then we'll come back to the county. But... At the county level, we can hold everybody within the county borders accountable to the Constitution. As more and more counties become uh, effectively set up, we then can drive the border to the Florida border. And, and the grand jury can put out a very simple little announcement. It's a publicity announcement to the PR folks in the newspapers. It says very simply, from this day forward, no unconstitutional laws, rules, regulations, executive orders, or treaties will be enforced within the boundaries of our county. That means Obamacare is gone. That means Common Core is gone. And then we get it over to the state boundaries. The follow-up is, would that also have to do with... Uh, Florida statutes that would regulate uh, things 
to do with the medical profession as uh, dispensing of drugs and uh, items like that and the, the criteria that they have set up that they deem to uh, make the public safe but which can be proven it would be a hardship if uh, they would, you know, if the people would be bound to that statute. Can, can you get into details like that? I, I can't get into that right now, but my gut tells me that... Would that be unconstitutional? Yeah, fundamentally, fun you're, uh, you're, you're really a free person, I'm a free person, you can buy whatever you want to buy, I can buy whatever I want to buy. But fundamentally, we could agree that we would like to have some standards, we'd like to have some safety standards, we, right. we can agree to that. But they can't be dictated to us. We can agree to that. We just can't be dictated. Hey, hang on one second, Mike. Yeah, I'd like to share something, especially in regard to this lady's question here. There's a case in 1803 called Marbury versus Madison. And in that case, the uh, outcome of the opinion was that anything that is in opposition to the Constitution is void from its inception. Think about that. It also states that you cannot be prosecuted or arrested or detained for violating such a law, okay? So we need to educate ourselves because we can be applying that every day, right now. We don't have to wait for a grand jury, you know? If the, if the government's gonna uh, impose this stuff on us, we can stand up and say, no, that's unconstitutional from the very beginning. But you what, have to stand, you have to stand together. What teeth do you have, though? What teeth do you have? Marbury versus Madison. That's my question. Wait, wait. Nine pages, nine pages, small, lost book print of cases it was used and cited in, never overturned since 1803. So, so but he asked a good question. How yeah. do we get this enforced? So, yeah. who is the highest ranking law enforcement official in every county? Sure. 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 In Florida, what do you think happened? Well, the, the legislature unconstitutionally assigned every county sheriff into the judicial system. Instead, he's supposed to be an executive branch officer re responsible to we the people to protect our rights. No, no, no. Right now, he's in the, under the chief judge in the county. Okay? We're going to fix that. That's out of bounds. But if the, if the sheriff won't do his job, then he is going to get indicted and we'll go to the undersheriff. If the undersheriff won't do his job, we'll go to the U.S. Marshal. If the U.S. Marshal finally won't do his job, we the people will do the arrest. We can do it. We have to. Well, that, that's kind of my question as well. I mean, you've already mentioned that you're being blocked in Manatee, that you're going to go to the state level. I foresee them saying, oh, well, that's nice, but you can go back home now. You're not going to do anything. And uh, I mean, what? what's to keep the king from killing the 25, I guess, is the biggest question. Well, don't forget the 25 are the kings. Each one of them is a king. Well, but yeah, well, the, here's, here's what happened. Here's how it's playing out in, uh, in Manatee yeah. County. We had one of our seven commissioners is a Tea Party supported Commissioner, really, she's great. She had the courage to do the right thing for the county and for the Constitution. And we asked her at a Tea Party meeting about a month and a half ago, well, what is it going to take to get it into Manny County? She said, what you're going to need to do is show up at one of our meetings with 6,000 people. Then you'll get your access. So it, they know it's coming. They know they can't stop it. In fact, the sheriff up in Marion County, even though Marion County commissioners are stopping it, the sheriff said, it's going to happen. It's coming. So we've got to build up enough support in the community, and then we're going to ring the bell, the Liberty Bell, and we need everybody to pile into Manatee County or Marion County or one county, and we'll, we'll get it. But in addition, while we're doing that, we're going to stand up the state one, unified state one. Can you share the uh, story about the FBI? Sure. Often people ask the question, well, what about the, the federal government? So the folks in New York at... at uh, John Durash is the leader, and Gerard Apria. So far, the FBI has been sent out three times. Why were they sent out? Well, as soon as they filed the first paperwork into the court, the judge, the chief judge, now it goes into the clerk, clerk of the court, it's supposed to be filed, and the chief judge told the clerk, don't file it. That's a felony. 
right there. There's a felony, okay? So they sent the FBI out trying to slow the whole process down. So for three times, the FBI has come out and said, show us what you're doing. And we have shown them what we're doing, and they said, no problem here. You guys are good to go. It's all about the Constitution. No problem. Uh, final question right here. Um, this is a great program. Um, I have a question. Uh, as far as the uh, Constitution goes, it limits the power of what the federal government can do, but it leaves open for what the state governments and the people can do. So uh, can you explain how that all works together? Well, the, no one, everybody that's part of the union has agreed that the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law. So it's above state law. It overrides state law. So states can have laws, but they can't infringe on the Constitution. In addition, the Bill of Rights only enumerates a few of our rights. I heard someone one time put together an enumerated list of our rights, and it's like 375, and they, they stopped counting. So we have many, many more rights than are enumerated in the Constitution. And the important point is that for years and years and years, we forgot to stand up for our rights and defend our rights. Sorry? Yeah. In the Fifth Amendment and the Seventh Amendment, it clearly states, in the Fifth Amendment, no one can be charged for a capital or an infamous crime. What's an infamous crime? Infamous crime is any crime that requires a penalty of one day in jail or more. No one can be charged with a capital or an infamous crime without an indictment or a presentment by a grand jury. Almost everybody today is going to jail without an indictment from a grand jury. And by the way, it is to be of your peers. What does that mean? Who are your peers? No. Our founders had a very good definition at the time. Peers are people who know your character. They know you and your character. That's who's supposed to be stand in judgment of you. It's a good question. There's no, what, what's going on here is it's, number one, it's hard work. Number two, it's all about the Constitution and common law. If someone wants to join up, and as long as they're about the Constitution and common law, they, they can join the party. If they want to do a separate party, it's not going to work well because ultimately, once these get going, the budget costs about a million or a million and a half bucks per county per year, and it's got to be funded by the Board of County Commissioners. So they don't want to fund multiple ones. They'll just tell people, look, join the, join the group. Thank you very much.